um, talking about some coaching points first. Uh, the one thing Mick, Coach Mick talked about was conflict, trying to create conflict. Well, I spent the last two days with the L.A. Rams and took a red eye, and I was in the middle seat for uh, four hours getting here this morning, so I experienced a little conflict. But, uh, but that's always uh, challenging. I think the one thing with coaching... is to focus on the coaching and the teaching. Um, I've been very fortunate to uh, be around and have been exposed to a lot of different coaches. I was, uh, before uh, the founder of the Bengals, Paul Brown, passed away, I you know, it had times where I got to be in his presence for, uh, and you just sit there and you take notes. Uh, I was at a conference this uh, January, Bill Polian spoke, Brian Billick spoke, and the one thing that, when you hear these gentlemen talk, it's not about schemes, it was about teaching, it was about coaching, and sometimes that gets overlooked. And always remember this, is that communication is the oxygen of relationships. When you look at things that are screwed up with regard to strength training and conditioning, whether it be high school, college, professional level, if there's bad communication sometimes between sports medicine and strength and conditioning staff, that's not good for the program. And, uh, you know, like I said, I spent the last two days with the Rams, and the communication between their sports medicine staff and their uh, strength conditioning staff was, you know, it was outstanding. We talk about, a, you know, attention to details and, and focus. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about is going to be really geared towards the high school coach today. Because when we talk about sports science, the first thing people think about is, well, we don't have a budget for that. So I'll hit some topics that will be important in, uh, to you. But focus and attention to detail. There was a guy here in town. He was the president of a, uh, he was the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Played college basketball at uh, Johns Hopkins. So every year at Johns Hopkins, there was a, another gentleman who was a CEO of a, uh, you know, Fortune 500 company. He would come and watch the basketball team practice. And he would pick one individual to choose that he would mentor, hoping that he would potentially hire him for his business. So he'd watch basketball practice, and so he chose this guy. He goes, you know, I'm, I want to be, you know, I want to mentor you this year. Hopefully, you can, I can hire you. So he looked at him and said, well, Why did you, you know, why'd you pick me? He goes, I watched when you guys ran your suicides. You touched every line. In my business, I can't afford to hire people who don't touch all the lines. So you have to have, you know, tremendous attention to detail. And you also have to have tremendous pride, and that's been talked about by the other speakers. And, uh, and Ken talked about, and Heather talked about, and what Coach Summit talked about was personal pride. And there's a story, this kid's like, you know, 14 years old. He's at a Panera, picks up his cell phone, and he goes, Hey, ma'am, uh, my name is Sammy Jacobs. I'd like to cut your grass. And on the other end of the line, there's an older lady who says, well, no, I already have somebody that, you know, cuts my grass, and I'm pretty pleased. Well, not only cut your grass, I'll do all the trimming for you. No, that's okay. I'll not only cut your grass, trim, but I'll go do the grocery shopping for you. She goes, no, that's okay. Hangs up. And there's a guy there. He goes, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. He goes, I own a business. And anybody your age with that much passion and motivation, I want to hire he goes, that's all right, I already got a job. He goes, well, I just heard you make a plea to try to cut this lady's grass. You should understand. I'm not Sammy Jacobs. I cut that lady's grass. I just want to make sure she was happy with the job I was doing. So that guy had some pride in what he did. And you have to have that type of pride, you know, in all the things that you do. And the stuff that I do, I'm an information gatherer. So if I go in and be with, be with an NFL team, I have to have most up-to-date information. So I go in, I've got maybe five, ten minutes with the, the head of athletic chair, what's new? Can you answer these questions? You go in and you meet with the head football coach, what can you tell me that's going to help us win? So you get very, very, <laughs> you get questions that, what are we, and how's, what you're going to tell me to help us win? And so when we talk about today and tomorrow's conference topics, you know, it's like we're focusing on the physical aspects. 
But if you have a circle and you have a pie, you have four quarters of that. We're talking about physical development. The other one would be technical expertise. Are you fundamentally sound in the techniques of your sport? Are you tactically sound? You have some guys that have great techniques, but they have no idea what the schematics are for your particular sport. So you, in those things have to, you can't, you can't chop off the head in sports. Oh, the guy's in great shape, but he's, he's, a, he's a liability on the field or on the court. And then the, the, uh, the, the other quarter you have to concentrate on, and you could say this is this person psychologically ready to compete. And a lot of that's influenced by their personal habits. Do they, do they drink too much? Do they sleep enough? Um, you know, who do they hang around with outside, you know, of uh, this particular sport? So those things all have an influence. But really, we're just looking at one quarter of this, this pie. And sometimes with sports science, you have people think, hey, we're going to make decisions on this or that. You know, there's a lot of guys that um, I think sometimes I give sports science a bad, a bad view. Super Bowl one, I don't know if you can tell there, there's Len Dawson on the sidelines. He's got a cigarette and a fresca. Super Bowl one, sidelines, cigarette and a fresca. And that was uh, Super Bowl 49, you know, um, Marshawn Lynch. And I guess that was suitable having the marijuana leaves on his uh, training mask. I had the uh, good fortune to hear Dan Gable speak a couple years ago. And there was a young kid that asked him, what made you a great, a great wrestler? He says, the thing that made me a great wrestler is the thing, thing that made me a great coach. First thing is understand your subject. What is your subject? Strength conditioning. Because my subject was wrestling. I did not want anybody to know wrestling better than me. He goes, and as a coach, if you ever came to one of our wrestling practices in Iowa, you would look... And it would be as if you had 24 separate coaches out there. I wanted those guys to understand the sport of wrestling in order to become a better wrestler. So understand, you know, your subject. And the one thing with, with regard to the, the profession that you're in now with strength conditioning, you go, oh, this is coming out, this is coming out new. What happens sometimes, you try to do too many things and you dilute what your focus is. When you dilute what your focus is, you're shortchanging your athletes. So what is it that you do well? If there's other things you're going to add to your program, you know, you have to sit down as a staff and reevaluate that each year. There's, uh, I don't know if any of you remember the coach, uh, Grant Taft, I'm sure you do. If you ever had the opportunity to hear him speak, you, you need to. He's fabulous. But he would always use the term every year before the upcoming football season. The term was, we're going to take this program, take it down to the frame, like we're going to restore a car. All right, let's take it down to the frame. What are we doing in, in, with regard to what you're doing? What exercise are we doing? Are we teaching this the best way? Is there something better we can put back on this when we're restoring this car? So if we're going to take it down to the frame, we're going to rebuild it. Can we use this same part we've been using the last five years? Or is there a better part? So you analyze your program that way each year. Because remember, if you're going to add something, you got to take something out. You only got so much time. And what do you do well? What are your athletes capable of doing well? So when you look at here, understand your subjects, understand your circumstances. You know, Mike Shabinsky was at a high school in Cincinnati here. On a given night, he probably did not know where 60% of his athletes were sleeping that night. By knowing that, if I'm going to sit there and criticize the athletes for not getting, you know, seven, eight hours of sleep, I'm just hoping the one guy found the house to sleep in for this evening. So when you're looking at what you're trying to emphasize, understand your subjects. Understand your subjects and your circumstances. Wow.
All right. Observational sports science. Uh, if you ever read Pete Carroll's book, he talked about him. He was an assistant coach for Bud Grant, Minnesota Vikings. So the team's doing like a warm-up lap before practice. And uh, Pete's sitting there bullshit with another coach. And Bud Grant walks up to him and says, you might want to watch the warm-up lap. You might learn something. And what Bud Grant meant by that is Bud Grant would observe, you know, how were they running? Did they look sore? Did they have, you know, a little bounce in their step? Did they have a smile on their face? Did they look ready? Did they look tired? And sometimes that might influence how he might alter that day's practice plan. So all that little thing, that stuff counts. Is keep your eyes open. Um, you know, a lot of times we have situations there where we'll do wellness questionnaires for players. And uh, I was in Seattle last year at a clinic, and Chris Carlisle was the strength coach for uh, the Seattle Seahawks. Got up, and he talked about that. He says, sometimes, you know, it doesn't become real personal. He says, you know what my wellness questionnaire is when a guy walks in the weight room? And I go, how you doing today? He said, I look in that player's eyes, and I can tell if something's wrong. He says, so I don't think there's something wrong with wellness questionnaires. But when you know your athletes, that personal interaction, you know, that, that that's that's crucial. And to try to 